Hey guys, my name's Steve Pycroft. I'm a composer, producer, a drummer, and I also make videos. I also run a couple of projects that bridge the gap between musical genres. I run an orchestra called Kaleidoscope Orchestra, and I'm in a band called Riot Jazz. And both those projects kind of mix genres and, and bring musical genres together. Uh, and this video is going to be about mixing genres and projects that kind of bridge the gap between those different musical styles. So Kaleidoscope Orchestra was a project that I set up 10 years ago with the goal of trying to bring classical music and other genres closer together. I had a lot of friends who were classically trained like me and then I had a lot of friends who were producers and they were making beats and dubstep and drum and bass. And it fascinated me that these two worlds were so far removed and yet they could complement each other so well. And it was Skrillex who was the first person that I thought his music translated well. He's this electronic dance music producer. And so I was really into dubstep and so I wrote an orchestral medley of his music and we put it online and he ended up sharing it on his social media and it was a, a real kind of validation for me that cross-genre music was interesting to people, interesting to the artists themselves but also to audiences. Uh, my mum is into classical music but she's never listened to Skrillex and I love the idea of going to a festival and there's an orchestra playing and you've got people who are used to listening to DJs and electronic music but they're engaging with an orchestra. <laughs> So these are my five reasons why I think you should devise a cross-genre project. Number one, for me, thinking outside of the kind of traditions and thinking outside of these labels of musical genres helps to fuel your creativity. Rather than thinking, I'm going to write a classical piece or I'm going to write a hip-hop tune or I'm going to write a heavy metal song... Thinking outside of those genres, for me, means that I've got way more ideas to, to work with. My brain works in a different way when it hasn't got those limits. And so I think it's really great to devise a project that isn't limited and it isn't kind of bound by any specific label or genre. Number two, I think it helps to identify what you love about music. Again, these labels and genres make people think in a certain way whereas for me if I listen to a piece of music and think just about the musical elements and not about the style I find what really makes me buzz and makes me happy and excited. I really like fast rhythms. I'm a drummer as I said so I like rhythmic music but that can be classical music, it could be the fast movement from a Beethoven symphony, it could be uh, an action cue from a, a film like How to Train Your Dragon. That's one of my favourite movie scores by John Powell. Or it could be a drum and bass track by someone like Etherwood or London Electricity. It doesn't matter to me what the style is. It's those rhythmic elements that, that just get me excited. The third thing for me is the collaboration. So when you're thinking outside of these traditional genres and these traditional labels, you meet other musicians and other creators who you perhaps wouldn't if you were just in that one kind of world. I loved my background uh, studying classically, studying percussion, playing in orchestras and I wouldn't trade that for anything, it was so valuable. However when I started to meet these producers uh, and people who were making music that I wasn't familiar with, I felt like I had a um, a new world of musicians to collaborate with. Number four is the education. So it kind of ties in with the collaboration, but the more styles that you kind of listen to and, and are open to, the more you'll learn about music in general and it will kind of open you up again to musical ideas that perhaps you wouldn't have if you were only working in one specific genre or one kind of musical sound world. And the fifth thing for me, which is really important, is it opens you up to other avenues in the music industry. There are endless ways that you can become a musician and earn a living, but we often think in terms of pop stars or 
orchestral musician or these things that are test tried and tested I guess but for me there is no tried and tested route I think when you try and follow someone's um, success path that's when you get into a bit of difficulty you have to find your own success path and for me working on a, a cross genre project only helps that because again you're meeting new people you're learning about new music and at the end of the day you never know who you might meet through your cross genre project and that could lead to the next thing and the next project or it could introduce you to the right person for you at that time so I hope those five points made sense and I hope that they're helpful. I'm going to speak very briefly about one project that I worked on that I think sums up all these five points. So in 2019, I wrote an orchestral version of a song called Face My Fears by Skrillex, Pooh Bear and Hikaru Utada. The song was featured on Kingdom Hearts 3, which is a computer game. And I remember hearing the song and I just thought that would sound really cool played by an orchestra. And so I did the orchestration. We got the Kaleidoscope Orchestra musicians together and recorded it. And rather than just putting it on YouTube like we'd done with other projects, I contacted Skrillex's management and his kind of record label and I said, you know, listen, this is what we've done. And the piece was actually released on Sony's classical label, Sony Masterworks. <laughs> I'll always work on cross-genre projects because it makes me so excited. I love the variety. I love the fact that one minute I'm doing something, the next minute I'm working on something else. And as I said at the start, I've worked on these two kind of projects for the last 10 years, but I've also worked with the BBC on a couple of other similar projects. I did a, a project for Comet Relief in 2012, I think. Uh, and it was a Baroque orchestra arrangement of a Justin Bieber song. But thank you for watching this. Uh, I hope it's been interesting and I wish you all the best for your musical projects and I hope to speak to you again soon. Thanks a lot.